it's the next level. Jesus, Carl. What a mess! Is she mad at me? I wouldn't exactly say she's happy. She tell you that, or you just speculate? You lied to her, Carl. You said you were going to work and you came here. Okay, get inside. She still love me. Of course she does. You're lucky, you know that? You got a blank slate. Start over. Be anyone you want. The rest of us are stuck with who we are. Panelers, welcome to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this week we're not just covering episode two, but episode three of the Umbrella Academy season two. So unfortunately, I encountered Hurricane Isaiah on my side because <laughs> I live in New York and I'm kind of like by the water area, I guess. And yeah, I was out of power since like Tuesday to like Friday afternoon so <laughs> i was i was at a i was mia which was funny too because with the generator for a day and a half i was able to actually watch season two episode <laughs> two <laughs> and three nice <laughs> and get my notes so uh we figured all right since this is a little late might as well do two and three together absolutely so and the first one we're going to start off with is Umbrella Academy Season 2, Episode 2, The Frankel Footage. And the synopsis for that particular episode is, An incident at the bar leads Luther to Vanya. Five finds an unsettling surprise in the film Hazel Left Behind. The cops come after Allison's husband. Yeah, it's it's interesting that this these... Maybe it's because Netflix drops the whole season... This particular synopsis is really there's a lot of spoilers in there. I mean, like the the fact that we that it reveals that Luther finds Vanya, it it reveals that Hazel drops something in Five's pocket, which I did hear another podcast say they did see they did notice that in episode one they saw him drop something in his pocket, but they couldn't tell what it was or it wasn't revealed. You know, there in episode one, I didn't notice it, but. Uh, yeah, and, and the whole thing about the cops coming after Allison. So it's it's an interesting, very spoilerful synopsis that one was. Yeah. I'm speaking like Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, we should get on to our top fives. Absolutely. Can we go home now? Why don't you start first? Sure. I think we got very similar top fives, but uh, I, I love that we got kind of a little bit of the handler's backstory here. And we see what happened to her after uh, Hazel sh uh, shot her. You know, we all thought that she was dead. Uh, that's what I thought. I just assumed, okay, we're not going to see Kate Walsh ever again. But then, of course, uh, you know, she pops back up. And uh, <laughs> it, it was interesting that she thinks she's going to be back on top. You know, she walks in. She She's throws her coat out there and nobody grabs it for her. She goes to her office and she opens it up and there's this fishbowl behind the desk, you know, and she finds out that she's been downgraded to basically the, the position that she was giving five. In fact, give her five's desk and his <laughs> nameplate is still there. And I love that little throw she does of the nameplate and nicks that guy Herb's ear, you know, and <laughs> sticks in the chalkboard there. But yeah, it was, I, I was, I will say I was pleasantly pleased to see the return of the handler. Yeah, definitely. That That is my number five as well. And, you know, her demotion in the company and then being mm -hmm. replaced by a fishbowl-headed person, too. <laughs> which yeah, sentient fish. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which reminds me of one of the characters in Hellboy 2. Mm. And 
uh, I'm forgetting the character's name, but he was like a puff of smoke in that one. <laughs> he, huh. he had a bull head, but he had a, a smoke and everything. And that was his whole uh, gimmick. And then, uh, like, obviously in her being her superior. And a lot of, uh, I don't know if you don't, you know this, Steve, but for the listeners out there, apparently her played Pogo. Yes, that's what I, I saw that in, in the trivia. Uh, the, the, he, did the, he did the motion capture for Pogo in the first season, the, that actor that played her. Correct. So I, I thought that was pretty cool when I, when I saw that. Yeah. And, you know, she has a lot of uh, motivation for revenge now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whether it be the company or five, I'm thinking five for the fact the way that she threw the, the nameplate from yeah, the, the, the desk. <laughs> that was interesting too because you mentioned that that her revenge, whether it's on the company or it's on um, on five, I'm not sure. I, I think you're right. I don't know where her aggression is necessarily placed. You know, who does she blame? Does she think maybe if she's able to to rectify this situation with five that she can. Um, you know, get back into the commission's good graces, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I, I do think it's interesting, too, though, that as you mentioned that, that maybe I wonder if the fishbowl guy got a little bit of a downgrade because she, you know, when she comes into the office, she says, oh, I thought you weren't coming down until the board meeting. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, I'm now. This is my job now. Hmm, so I wonder it, what it, he did. Exactly. If, if, if maybe the same kind of thing, because of all of her mistakes, they, they splashed on him. Uh, <laughs> pun not intended there <laughs> with the water. But, uh, but it'll be interesting to see. I, you know, I don't know. It's not like it, I'm not I'm not begging. If we get to the end of the season, I have no clue how this this fish became sentient or how this fishbowl guy, uh, <laughs> what his origin is. I'm not going to be like disappointed in the season, but it might be kind of cool to find out what the deal is with that. How do we have, a, why do we have a sentient fish and, uh, where did it come from? Is it an alien? Is it, you know, uh, what, uh, so it might be interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting. I'm wondering whose fishbowl he peed in, though, to get that demotion himself. <laughs> Ew. Ew. Um, yeah, so my number four is just is Lila and the fact that this is this is Diego's uh, the the chick that he escapes the asylum with, and you know she's got these skills. She's not just fighting; she's able to hotwire a car. She <laughs> seems very capable. Uh, she seems to be handling this this whole killers coming after him. Uh, mm -hmm. pretty well without really batting an eyelash. And I, I love that her and Diego's uh, conversation in the car where she says, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a book that's written for a dumb child and uh, something like that. But then, you know, five finds them. He zaps into the back seat of the car yep. and I'm not really sure how he figured out where they were. The only thing I can figure is that the, the writer's, producers whatever are they want us to kind of think that you know maybe five he knew that diego wanted to go after oswald so maybe he went to oswald's house and diego wasn't there so then he went to the book depository and he saw them in the car and that's why he was able to pop into the car but it just seemed a little uh coincidental that he was able to find them so quick and then of course that scene between uh, Lila and Diego in, in the closet there where she's just kind of breaking down and he's trying to encourage her and, and lift her back up again. Uh, it was really, it's a good, it's good to go from, you have this really hilarious scene and then we, we switch to more of a dramatic uh, kind of scene that does have some funny undertones in it, but it is really more of a dramatic scene. Yeah, definitely. I, I have to laugh the fact that, you know, that would be my number four too. It's funny how hours sync up and I think I threw my notes in like, like a week ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I tried not to look too closely at them. So yeah, I, was you, trying... I, I always go with the idea of like, I'm just going to drop them in my section and that mm -hmm. would be it. Exactly. But it's pretty funny how they just happen to be dissimilar. But yeah, I, you know, she's so interesting, this chick, Lila. She is really crazy in my mind. She's Fruity right. Loops. But, you know, she's Indian and has a British accent. Well, no. you got to remember by the the India was a British held province until exactly. like the 50s or mm -hmm. maybe even later than that. So it's it would be it, there's a lot of British people in India. So I think that that doesn't it wouldn't it's it's there's a lot of 
I think people who need to have a more of a British accent just because of the yeah. influence that the UK had on that that exactly. country for so long. Yeah, and also the fact that she's in America though that's very mm-hmm. odd, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and because we've already watched episode three, we do know that there's more to her than that. But we'll discuss Correct. that when we get to when we get three. to that. Yeah, right. Right. yeah. And I I found in this episode though she's very manipulative. Mm. You know, that was the first thing, and I'm like, uh, oh, yeah, this is making me very curious about this character. Do I trust her? Do I? I like yeah. her because she's so quirky and wacky, mm-hmm. but. I think Diego found someone that he really likes, sort of, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they click. They, click they do, sure. they do click. Um, so that brings us to my number three yes. here. Uh, okay, maybe I just completely missed it in the last season. I, did did Klaus have those tattoos, the hello, goodbye tattoos in season one? And I, I just call in season one. He must have, though, because I, I can't. He, he everything because... that I've seen picture wise for season one, he has them. Okay, but then... I don't recall them when I was watching it. Right. OK. I so, didn't pay so, attention, I guess. So he probably I, I remember I remember when the EMT is in the first episode of season one or whichever episode it is that he that the EMT brings him back to life. I remember seeing something on his hand, but I don't think we could actually read them very well. Exactly. So, so maybe maybe that's why we're both kind of blanking on it. But he must have had them because Allison, as soon as she saw them on the other guy, she's like, where did you get these? And mm-hmm. she hasn't seen. So he obviously had them before they traveled uh, back in time. Uh, I thought that was really cool. The whole TLC lyric that's also in the other guy is the movie. <laughs> um, you know, and, and the whole coincidence of him meeting Allison's husband there in prison uh, and then I love the fact that he didn't that, that he gets released and they said they got a call from the governor and he says well I don't know the governor but I know some of his wealthiest uh, benefactors and uh, so I, I love uh, and I, I, again because we watched episode three this is kind of a redundant statement but I do hope we get a little <laughs> bit of this guy's backstory because and we are we are going to get his backstory or a little bit of his backstory at least uh, in episode three we find out why uh, he has all this money. Yes. Yeah. And don't go chasing waterfalls, everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, and the then I, I love, I love the fact that he break. you know, there at the end, we see him break into his own mansion, you know, with the rock and Ben sitting on the couch and Ben's like, you know, the key's under the mat, but you know that the key was under the mat. <laughs> yeah. And, Ben's always there. <laughs> so, yeah. He's always his conscience. He tries to be the good conscience for Klaus, but Klaus always just ignores it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and my number three would be Klaus is meeting Allison's husband, Ray, mm-hmm. within the jail. You know, what a coincidence that was. And they play off one another pretty well. And Klaus really digs him, Yeah, you know, to go to a 60s term. And he, <laughs> he likes him. So, And Allison finds out that Klaus is a quote-unquote prophet of his own cult. Yeah. One of the newly found followers within the prison. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was that was a whole cool scene where she sees that guy's tattoos and then she's talking to him, you know, through the, kind of through the, the bars there and she finds out, basically finds out that Klaus is alive and now she's going to go looking for him, so. Yeah. Uh, so my number two is uh, is just that whole fight between Diego and and Reginald Hargreaves and the fact that we get to see you know Pogo as a as a little baby monkey or or chimpanzee I guess uh, but kind of dangerous at the same time. Yep. Uh, I love that whole Matrix move where he where Reginald dodged Diego's knife and then even though it bounced off the the girder behind him it sticks into another girder so he he almost dodged it twice kind of so i thought that was really cool and then that fight was so even though it was dark and i had to back it up a bunch of times uh to look at at things and it was it was just well choreographed i think that was one of the best fight scenes of uh, of the show that we've ever had so i i don't know what they did in season two to kind of step it up but that fight scene was really really good yeah i agree i i enjoyed it but the fact that you know he, he got into a fight with his own father Mm-hmm. <laughs> at this point, yeah, you know, well, you know, adoptive father at that, but you know, and on top of that, at at the end, he got stabbed. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, yeah. But you know, and the fact that you know, you we got, and I really enjoyed the fact that we got to see Pogo mm-hmm. an early version. So my hopes of uh, seeing a history of Pogo 
Yeah, and even though we didn't hear him speak, I did notice, I didn't notice on the first watch, but on the second watch, I noticed that, that when Diego walked in there, there was a chalkboard with a written pogo, and it looked like it had been written, like the chalkboard was like setting on the ground, yeah. and it looked like a child's kind of writing, writing. way of writing. So I think uh, that was the chimpanzee, we're supposed to assume, that was the chimpanzee writing his name on the chalkboard. So which, I thought which, that was really cool. Which kind of adds up, too, because if you mm-hmm. think about it, this is in the 60s. Yeah. And yeah. the fact that Pogo was, like, a baby at that point. Mm-hmm. And then we, you know, go forward into, what, 2019 or whatever mm-hmm. it is when we saw them in season one. And he's an old chimpanzee with glasses. He's gray. He's yeah. older. Yeah, exactly. So we, we know that Pogo has been around all For a this while. time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, pretty cool. And then my number two would be Luther's encounter with Vanya. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, he was on a mission to kill her at some point. You know, he had the gun behind him and everything mm-hmm. when he encounters her in the barn. But she has amnesia. We we do truly see that. he She mm-hmm. doesn't recognize him. And he thinks it's, you know, she's playing a- amnesia. Mm-hmm. And she's not. And he still thinks, you know, she's lying throughout it. But apologizes about letting her down at the very end which was season one at the very end of season one and everything yeah and and i'm being honest to someone who can't remember and Mm -hmm. you know she is left with a lot of questions Uh, but luther was elusive with uh getting the information about her whereabouts with that wallet that uh her friend's husband left at the uh go-go right (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and and that was this is this was actually my number one was this whole was this whole scene between uh, Tom Hopper and uh, and Ellen Page because it's played so well and you see uh, like you just described you see he comes to the barn and he's he's coming there to kill her because if if she if he even gets an inkling that you know it's it's the only thing that stops him is the fact that she had amnesia and and once he realizes that she had amnesia i think then he starts to walk everything back and he realizes for himself you know he realizes that that i did some bad stuff i should have been the leader i should have reached out to her and we, we like i said tom hopper and ellen page play that scene so well i think the acting in this this show is just superb that with just little movements and little facial things that you see of him as he you know he he tosses the wallet to the wife when she puts the shotgun on him and and he says well I was just returning this wallet and but Vanya knows that he knows her but like you said she's kind of left with these questions about you know well who is this guy this ginormous of a man who's claiming to who knows me but he doesn't really give her any information once he figures out that she doesn't remember anything Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So what is your number one? My number one. Well, that would be Diego and number five's finding their father's company in the Mm -hmm. 60s. You know, it it looked more like a front to number five at one point, you know, like a front, which it plainly looks like with all the dust because nobody's apparently been there. And Hargreaves has a lot of secrets. Number five wants to expose them. And Hargreaves is seen walking around the building but we find a young pogo which we just spoke about and then mm-hmm. we find hargreaves stabbed diego like i mentioned in the middle of the night hargreaves had health uh, really stealth moves which you brought up looked like the matrix <laughs> yeah yeah and the song i'm a man yes i am by and i'm not sure who the spencer davis group oh it was steve winwood's power group wow. back in the 60s or whatever that was uh, yeah, Spencer Davis Group did that song. Cool. And, you know, Hargreaves walks away holding young Pogo's hand as they walk away when that's yeah. going on. And, you know, I don't, that's another one of those things that I don't know if we're going to get, if we're going to get any more information about what he was doing in that uh, kind of building, because it looked like he was making uh, some sort of videos, maybe nuclear holocaust type. Uh, you know, nu- uh, ways to survive a nuclear holocaust kind of video or, or something like that, or just training Pogo. I don't know, because we've got mu- movie cameras, we've got mannequins, we've got uh, all sorts of weird things in there that is not umbrella-making stuff. So Yeah. 
Um, so we've got a few notes here. Um, mm -hmm. Trying to see what have we not discussed. Uh, we oh that uh, yeah, Vanya's amnesia apparently is real. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was cool when the cop's eyes, and I didn't notice that in season one when she would use her rumor power, but the cop's eyes kind of got this white kind of glow across them, uh, like a special effect kind of thing. I thought that was really, really cool. And uh, I'm a little, now, I don't think this is necessarily a goof because I know that developing still color uh prints involves a lot of very specific chemicals and temperatures and there's a lot like it's not just black and white like when you're uh developing black and white film yeah and i can't imagine i i'm really surprised that elliot was able to get that color movie with sound kind of developed or whatever maybe they don't have to develop it i guess maybe those those handheld projectors all you basically got to do is put it on a reel to reel and put it out there because it, it was just a movie right so maybe yeah it's... yeah that's all it was it was pretty yeah. much just a movie yeah. and from what i remember as a kid because you used to have those eight millimeters mm -hmm. with the reel to reel those you didn't really have to develop too much yeah and that so that leaves this with the with the next question of then what did he have to do with it wouldn't you just take it out of the unless you have to to convert it from the eight millimeter to a different type of reel i don't know Probably uh, he you know, probably didn't have the the projector to to use it with. Yeah, that's maybe. Why they I don't, needed it. But he's talking about emulsion and paper and stuff that he's got to go get from a film. And I'm like, it's a movie. It's not you're not doing prints from it. So it, it, that that whole scene was a little bit confusing. Well, they did didn't they use slides at one point to show that it was Hargreaves on? No, he he backed the you know it was a projector it was a movie so projector he backed it up he backed okay. it up so that they could kind of zoom it that was their way of zooming in is he backed it up uh, uh <laughs> you know and so it, it just a little I just been disbelief a little bit for that yeah but I'm, I'm okay with it I you know I, let's move on um and then the, <laughs> these new commission guys they're just crazy this whole knife throwing thing and I was listening to another podcast that they said this was a normal thing in their childhood uh that you throw a knife at another person's feet to see who can who flinches or this I don't understand this practice um <laughs> me neither <laughs> um, you know if you're going to point a deadly weapon at me you better be ready to use it brother cuz uh you know, don't do it. Oh, um, definitely. So, it, 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 but it just it's a very strange uh, kind of, uh, you know, these guys are just strange. The one guy's standing there in his tidy whities They got the, <laughs> the decapitated head in the freezer. Of all what, things, that is kind of gruesome. What did they do with the rest of the body? <laughs> why, if you're, why keep the head if you dispose of the rest? I don't understand. Maybe it's a trophy. Who knows? I, yeah, may, I don't know. Weird, weird stuff. Um, Though that's those are strange. They look albinoish. They yeah. have the really pale skin, <laughs> whitish kind of or extremely blonde hair and light eyes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> um, the the few that I have, I went over it already with AJ. Well, that's an interesting character with the fishbowl mm -hmm. head. You know, it just reminded me of the second Hellboy, which had uh, Johann Kraus. That's mm -hmm. the name of that character that I was re referencing. Okay. And he was the smoke guy with the, the fishbowl kind of head. <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, AJ is more effective than the handler. And I'm curious as to what the 743 incident was. Yeah, and I, you know, I know you've already watched ahead, uh, but I, I, I glanced through the titles, and I know there is a title of an episode. Yes, that's 743 incident. So we're. But I can't that. remember. We know my memory sucks. So right, right. So I think we're, <laughs> we're going to get that story at some point in the season. We are going to get that story with the seven. She also mentioned the. Um, oh, and I said in a to in a voicemail that I sent to another podcast, the San Mateo incident or the Sam something where she got the steel plate in her head. So, Oh yeah. I don't know if we're going to, we're going to hear that, hear that story or not. Yeah. And then you already bro uh, talked about number five, not realizing that he had something in his pocket, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a Kodak video of all things. He accidentally rips his uniform jacket pocket to reveal that, you know, and that's how he found it. And that was right. I believe at the bar. Yeah. And then uh, Luther sees Vanya, but she doesn't say anything to him at the go-go. Right. Remember, she, she gets in the, the car. car she sees up. him, looks at, like, you know, because she doesn't know him. Right. 
Right. So that was pretty interesting, but that was pretty much a setup to, you know, pretty much show us that, yes, she does have amnesia. Mm-hmm. And Allison stops herself mid manipulation with her powers with the police when they yeah. invade her home. Well, her, her husband actually stopped, told her to stop talking. Yes. So, so, because he brings that up in the next, in the next episode, what she, what she was, what she was going to do in that. Correct. So. And then, um, and then the next thing I have would be Elliot seems to have a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. A sixties conspiracy theorist at its purest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has a dark room and a bunch of other stuff. He has a police scanner. Yeah. Who had a police scanner in the sixties, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, number five has Elliot developed the film of the clips that Hazel mm-hmm. snuck in his pocket after he rubs the date off the box. Yeah, but the, even though the, the you know they said it in the video though, which obviously he doesn't know that when he gives the guy the video, he doesn't know that somebody's going to say it's November twenty second, nineteen sixty three. Yeah, but you know that's how the guy figured out that there was something weird going on because he realized that video was from the future or at least was pretending to be from the future or something like that. Yeah, and then that leads into you know Elliot's realization in number five in Diego after mm-hmm. he confronts them after watching the video and all that cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, I already, already talked about the crazy albino assassins <laughs> and uh, Carl's wife being sensual with Vanya and noticing the calluses on Vanya's fingertips, asking where she got them. Now, go ahead. I'll let you finish your thought on this. Cause I've no, got... it, 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 it's very interesting because it kind of confirms her amnesia. And that comes, the calluses come from her playing, Mm -hmm. you know, what was it, the violin? Yeah, the violin, right, right. So, you know, that comes from that. But she doesn't pick up an instrument or anything. But she is attracted to music, which she does with, uh, I think, Harlan a -hmm. lot. So Yeah. I just, I that scene troubled me. Not troubled me, Not that's not the right word. Uh, That scene, it's one of those things where... If, if a similar scene was done between two men, you wouldn't have any – there would be no even thought of attraction between the two men. We would just be like, oh, he's noticing scars or he's noticing calluses. But because it's two women, we automatically go to – and I went to this myself. I'm not, not going to lie. That, oh, there's something there's something going on there. There might be something between these two. And I, I just think that it's unfortunate that in this day and age we, we jump right to that. I'm not saying that, that – it just it, – it, it bothers me that that's one of the things that we jump to. Yeah, they could that. have they could have alluded it differently, I think. Yeah. But it just yeah, it just it's one of those things that just it's it's interesting to me the the way T V has changed and the, the, the world has changed and society has changed. So Yeah. Just a just a thought. It is. Uh we had a few quotes. Go ahead, you start with yours. We'll just go back and forth. Oh, the crematorium guy saying, <laughs> I don't think that was gas. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, Herb, when uh, when she says that she craps bigger than Herb, uh, Herb says someone needs fiber. <laughs> <laughs> and then the handler to AJ about oh. her being her superior. Yeah. She goes, I've dropped turds bigger than Herb. <laughs> there you go. And that leads to the, the someone needs fiber line. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Very funny. Um, I, I really liked that whole conversation when when they're in the bar and Five is like, "There's an apocalypse happening," and, and Luther just goes, "You're always saying that." Yep. <laughs> you know, I just. The next one I would have is, "You're lucky, you know that you have a blank slate. Mm-hmm. Be anyone you want. The rest of us are stuck with who we are." And that's Carl Tavania. When she picks him up at the Carousel Burlesque nightclub. Yeah, that was a good one. I almost put that one down until I saw that you already had it in here because I really liked that. I really loved, and I only put a piece of it in here, but again, I want to go back to Tom Hopper, and he delivers this monologue there at the end as Luther that he's talking to Vanya, and the the crux of it is, I get two quotes from it, is he said, I never wanted to be the bad guy. And then he says, I just came here to tell you that I'm sorry. And I just, Aww. he played that so well. And I remember just watching it going, and it's a whole long monologue that I wish I had written the whole thing out, but I didn't want to, to spend all that time on it. it. It was very sincere. And, you know, listeners, you could actually go back and, you know, yeah, go listen to it. Or we could put it as the intro. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Up to you. We'll find out after I edit. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, the next last one I have would be Cousins on My Robot Side. <laughs> and that would be number five to Elliot when Elliot asked, are they friends of yours? Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was great. Uh, and then the last one I have is I love that when uh, when they're in the closet and uh, she says to to Diego, Lila says pinky square and he says the pinkiest. I thought that was just a funny, funny <laughs> way of putting it. The pinkiest. So uh, very good. So Umbrella Academy uh, Season 2, Episode 3 is entitled The Swedish Job, and the synopsis for this episode is, as the set-in approaches, Allison reconnects with Klaus, the Swedes chase Vanya into a cornfield, Luther makes a distressing discovery. Bum, bum, bum. Which is funny, too, because now we know that those albino guys are Swedish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another interesting thing. That, yeah. Again, it's one of these synopsis that, that gives a little bit almost too much away. But this one is, is brief enough that it didn't really uh, spoil too much for you if you read the synopsis first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think I went, I went first last time. Why don't you go first this time? Sure. My number five would be seeing Klaus's rise to fame as a cult leader. <laughs> mm. He How he tricked an old lady for her money to do what he needs to have his commune. He doesn't even believe in it, <laughs> which is so funny. Yeah. But utilizes Ben to help him from the other world. That, that one scene where he's lifting, Ben's lifting Klaus mm -hmm. up in front of all the old people and her mansion yeah <laughs> and he almost drops him at a certain point i think he does <laughs> yeah he did he did yeah i had this was as my number five as well just this whole uh backstory of, of klaus and i thought it was interesting at the very beginning we've got ben is just why is he hanging out outside of the diner what's the point of that why didn't he go inside the diner with with Klaus, I don't know. Um, he's just watching, you know, from the window as the the, the manager throws him out. But uh, I thought it was interesting that bald guy that we meet in the prison, the one that that tells Allison um, he's got the tattoos on his hand. We see him in these flashbacks. He's the guy. Uh, he's on the bus. He's kind of smoking pot with them. He's in India with them. Um, and it, what's interesting about that is when he says in the prison. Uh, he says that he's, he's, he heard Klaus speak at Berkeley in 1961, which 1961 is the first flashback where we see him. But mm -hmm. then he's with – it looks like he's with Klaus throughout for at least a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, you know. So I, I thought that was interesting. And uh, there's we get a brief shot when they're on that bus of Ben – and he's reading a book and there's a black woman who's also reading a book and Ben is very intensely looking, looking at, her. at her. Yeah. 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 And uh, I think that's got to be that's got to be a story that we're going to come around to again. I, I can't believe they would they would leave a story point like that. Just just kind of hanging. Uh, and then I, I love the effect uh, there after that cold open where the flocking birds kind of looked like an umbrella. I don't know if you noticed that or not. Oh, yeah, I did. But, uh, they, yeah. they did that. That was really well done, I thought. Definitely. My number four would be the fact that when Five meets up with Vanya in the cornfields area, that he knows that she has amnesia and that she has her powers, but she doesn't know how to use them. Five's, you know, just Five's way of getting everyone back together slowly within this episode. It's weird. Yeah, I don't think he knew that she had amnesia. I think he just figured it out from the, what she was saying to him. Because uh, I, I, think I, just, I think you're right. Yeah. The way the, the, she said a couple of things at the very beginning there, he's like, okay, what do you remember? And then she told him, well, I fell out of the, into this alleyway and then I got hit by a car. And so what's interesting though about that meeting, and I have this as my number four as well, is just the fact that Vanya ran away. Um, where was she going? Was she going to find Luther maybe? Um, I, I'm not sure where she was going when she left the house with the station wagon and then she encounters those the Swedish guys. But um, there's a moment there, and because I'll expand upon this since we have this, a very similar number four, is where did all this equipment come from that five, five had Elliot, Elliot says, we got one. Here's an instant that all this equipment you had me go get has, has indicated there's been this whatever atmospheric thing has happened mm -hmm. with sound waves. And that's how five knows where Vanya is, or at least where Vanya was. Okay, because he because he he sees. But my problem is the timeline is very tight. I mean, we're talking like we're like it's like November. within three years. No, 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 no days. We're days, sir. Remember, five went back to November fifteenth. 
and it's been two or three days now. Oh yeah, and right. And the world's going to end on November twenty fifth. There, there's a ten. This whole season is going to cover about ten days. Now with time travel, it could be a lot more. But my problem is, is that Elliot said he was going to need five or six hours to get that film developed. But yet he was able to gather all his equipment. They got it set up, and to where it could find Vanya within. I, it had to be a day, right? Because they're they're not going to lose another. It's just the the, the timeline. I, I'm I'm trying not to. I'm trying to suspend my dis- disbelief right here because <laughs> they they have they have created this though. They have created this very tight timeline window. This ten day window. To where we know in episode one, I believe it was November 25th. I'd have to go back to my notes. November 25th, which would be three days after JFK, when JFK was supposed to be assassinated, yep. uh, when the world's going to end. And five went back to November 15th. So this whole season has got a 10-day window to have a lot of things happen. Hmm. And I, I'm I'm, I'm going to help. I'm going to give them a little bit of grace because they're good writers. And I'm sure... It's going to all work out in the end, but I'm, I'm a little, because we're supposed to assume that if five had not returned, right, Mm -hmm. that somehow in this window between November 15th and November 25th, all of the, the siblings were going to get back together some other way, not with five, right? Mm -hmm. Because when five encounters them, they haven't seen him. Mm -hmm. And they're in episode one and they're dressed all in their Avengers black uniforms and they're all fighting for the U S military. So what, what happened in the original timeline? I would love to see that. (laughs) Yeah. That, that got them to that place in this 10 day window. Correct. You know, because, because I'm, I'm still so, and, and maybe I'm overthinking it, you know, listeners, if you got another idea or if I'm, like I said, if I'm being stupid and overthinking it, then let me uh, let me know. But I really think the timeline is way too tight for what they're trying to accomplish here. So, well, well, we could always suspend our disbelief and think that five jumped even again from one time to another to say, "Hey, we need to get this." Oh, yeah, okay. then... the... <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that they're going to do the Bill and Ted's thing. Where yeah, we'll be... just go back. He's... Remember to do this. Yeah, we're going to do this. Well, put, well, put the, I must the have garbage remember... can yeah. up there and over the jail. <laughs> yeah, I must have remembered to do it because it's there. Yeah, no, we'll see. Uh, if they if they try to pull some of that Bill and Ted stuff on me, I I might have to not like it but no I, i'm sure it's going to work out i just it's it just this is they've they've created for themselves a very tight timeline here it is and i do agree with you the way you brought it and the way you you worded it yeah it mm-hmm. does you just have to, my my feeling is the thing that attracted me to the show for the most part were the characters mm-hmm. the the writing you know like other shows that we watch <clears throat> like Fear of the Walking Dead, uh, it goes a little bit crazy, and you have to yeah. suspend your disbelief hugely. Right. But with this, uh, I think that you know we could give it some leeway. Yeah, I, I yeah. think they'll be able to write it out in some respect, and you know, you, there's always going to be some crazy fan on Reddit that's going to be posting. Yeah. It's like, oh, but if you look at this, and I've calculated it to the <laughs> point of. One day, but then these hours, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you can have somebody that's always going to be like that, but yeah, you know, sometimes you got to let it go. To, oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm good with it. I'm I'm not. It's not gonna. I'm gonna move on. I can move past it. I'm wondering if they, you know, did they ever do that with Lost? Um, I'm still watching Lost, so I I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember clearly, but yeah, Lost was always there was always an issue of timeline with Lost because you know the first season of Lost covers like 45 days. And then the second season covers maybe, uh, if I remember correctly, the, the second season only covers like two or three weeks, maybe a month. And then we get to season three and season three is again, it's another like only like three or four weeks is covered in the entire season, which that's why they had the same issue, uh, with Walt, with the the actor that played Walt, that the Walking Dead had with the actor that played Carl, is that he kept getting too older, too old for it, and so the way Lost, they just wrote the character out, and uh, with Walking Dead, they just didn't address it until ten years later or whatever it was when they killed him <laughs> off. You know, they 
you had this kid that's supposed to be 10 years old and he's, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old and mm. his character is supposed to be 12, you know, <laughs> um, it's not going to work, but no lost, lost the, the problem. That was the, one of the problems that lost kind of ran into, I think was they had these, these seasons, they had a whole season that covered a very short period of time. Yeah. And did, well, did they ever go back is the question. Did they have to go back to like certain time areas or no? Because I I only not, watched the first season. Not me. within the timeline of the show. They there's there's one season where they go back to the seventies, uh, the nineteen seventies. There's a, oh, okay. there's a there's a season where they do uh, which I think it's toward the end, the last season or so, where they do a what they called uh, I think they called it a sideways flash because they created a timeline where the plane didn't crash. And oh, wow. so, yeah, huh. it's a, it, I, I have to, it's been a while since I rewatched it and I'm slowly rewatching it now with that, the, the, we have to go back lost revisited podcast, uh, joint pad, podcast of house podcastica and uh, the next level podcast network, uh, put a little plug in there for that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, where were we at? Are we at your, my number three, your number three, go ahead. Then. My number three would be Allison's fortitude to do the sit in without Ray. Mm-hmm. You know, she's very strong willed. Uh, even with her, without using her powers, mm-hmm. she's able to do these things. I, she has more of a confidence than she did before, whereas in the first season, she had a lot of doubt. She was always on edge. She didn't want to do anything wrong because of her daughter mm-hmm. at that point, you know. And now she's feeling kind of independent. And then she has Ray on her side. And I, I really like the development of that character. Yeah, no, I love I love that you bring this up because there's when she has that whole conversation with with Klaus, and I think this is a little bit of my number three because some of the Hargreaves family stuff is what I had all in my number three. So I'm gonna uh, jump in here with that. Is when she has that conversation with with Klaus, you can really tell that that year of not being able to speak really developed her character because she couldn't use her power for a year. And then it's kind of like one of those things like um, when you talk to people who they stop drinking coffee or they stop um, or they they say they're going to stop for just a short period of time of doing something. But Mm -hmm. then when they get to the end of that time, they realize, oh, I didn't really need that thing. So I'm not ever going to go back to it. And they end up never. And I think that's what happened with Allison is she couldn't speak for a year after that injury. And when she came back, she realized when she was able to speak, she realized I don't need my power. I can actually accomplish things and do things. And that's what she, she tells Klaus when he says, um, he says something like, well, did you rumor that? Why didn't you, when, when he, she says that her husband got arrested yep. and he says, well, why didn't you rumor them? And she says, I haven't used my powers uh, ever since that injury. And I'm very proud of myself that I got where I am today, not without using my powers. And so you can, you can tell that she, was very proud of that and correct. So that's why it, it hurts so much there at the end when she uses her power and her husband runs away and it's just so heartbreaking to see that scene. But um, some of the other stuff that we've got uh, with the Hargreaves family uh, is I love how every time five encounters one of the family members, he's very matter of fact about the way he talks about the apocalypse. He even tries to do it with Vanya until he realizes that she doesn't have any memory. And yeah. then, but he still does it with her when she asks and he goes, well, you were born and you were purchased by a, by a reclusive billionaire who raised you in an academy <laughs> with your, with your fellow siblings that had powers and you didn't have powers. And then we tried to, uh, to stop the apocalypse and we failed at it. So I thought it was the, just the way, the very dry way that Aiden Gallagher and I was corrected. Uh, he, this is, he's only 16. Yeah. Uh, Lara sent a comment to our okay. Facebook page and yeah, she said he's 16 when she researched it. Yeah. I, the, just like you, I thought he was like close to 20, yeah. but no, nah, he, yeah, he's 16, but he's a mature 16 year old apparently right. and knows yeah. how to act that character. And he, Being he plays older. that character really well, and I, I really thought that was that was really cool. But that just that dry way that he delivers these you know prophetic uh, announcements uh, is is really cool. Uh, I like when we saw. I, I talked a little bit already about Allison's reuniting with 
with Klaus. I thought that was that was very touching the way she just jumped right into the water and gave like no regard for her dress or anything. She just jumps right into the pool mm-hmm. uh, with him to, to give him a hug. She's missed him that much. And to realize that these characters up until now, they didn't even know if their siblings were alive. So probably most of them were, were living as if their siblings were dead. That's and, what I was assuming as we were watching them. Yeah. And so now they're seeing each other and they're realizing, Oh, you know, th- it's kind of like you've been brought back to life. So I thought that was really, really cool. Um, I liked that Ray uh, meeting, he met both Luther and Klaus kind of independently of of each other. Um, But it's interesting that he doesn't mention to Luther. He doesn't mention Klaus to Luther. No, but he does mention to Allison Allison that he met both that, you know, not only did I not know you had one brother, but I found out that you have two brothers and one of them is the biggest white boy I've ever seen (laughs) in my life. (laughs) So I thought that was kind of cool. I thought, uh, I thought it was very, it was another touching thing of five, not telling Vanya the truth about the apocalypse, uh, wanting to shelter her from that or, and I wonder if that's going to come back to kind of bite them on the butt when she does, remember because when her memories come back you know what order is she going to remember things and is she going to remember being you know repentant of what she was doing or is she going to remember getting locked in a cell you know is she going to remember killing pogo and is it going to be that she's going to remember killing pogo because pogo knew that her powers had been stifled Mm. Or, you know, is she going to, what, what part of her is going to, to be awakened by her memories? Is it going to be the resentful side or is it going to be the repentant side? And that's, that's going to be an interesting story to, to see play out of which Correct. side, yeah. which side of Vanya are we going to get? Or does she even get those back in any respect? Yeah. Yeah. Is she going to get her memories back at all? Right. Yeah. Right. Maybe she has to go on whatever her brothers and her sister are telling them her. Yeah. We'll you know? see. I don't know. I mean, we've only seen her use her powers once, uh, since she, besides the first episode. Um, and that was only when, she was stressed and it came out. So we haven't even seen her, you know, restored back to her full power. Yeah. That was like in a cornfield and it looked like something out of like a UFO cornfield thing. (laughs) Yeah. Like a, like a crop crop circle that she made there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And that would lead me to my number two. Yes. Your number two. And yeah, that, you know, you've already went over some of it, which would be the fact that Ray meets Klaus and Luther in the same week, you know, Mm -hmm. and then Luther doesn't take it well. But Klaus embraces it and completely loves it in yeah, the jail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah the two way different, two different reactions. Yeah, and Luther is like so. He's sitting at the table and he sees the candy. He goes, "Can I have some of these?" And you can see how broken hearted he is. Yeah, like, she got married. He's still in love with her, and it, it, you could see the upset on him the way it was too. Yeah, yeah, and that's another one of those those things that that I said like Tom Hopper plays it so well is is that he's just you can see and that's what changes with him at the end because you know he's despondent because for the last whatever a year two years that he's been here I guess he's been here been there a year now um, he's been thinking that Allison is dead. And, and then suddenly he finds out that she's alive. And so he's elated. He's got this box of chocolates and he's going to see her. And then he's despondent again because he finds out that she's married and she's actually moved on. Where, whereas he wasn't able to move on after thinking she was dead. He can only assume that, well, she must have moved on thinking that I'm dead. Yeah. And and so he has this, this, this despondency about him that – and then, you know, he picks up the picture, the wedding picture, and he just – you can just see it's breaking his heart completely. Yeah. Um, so a little bit, uh, we've already started to kind of go into it. Uh, the, the not Allison lookalike there at the beginning kind of, uh, got me. I thought, Oh, is that Allison? Oh no, it's not Allison. Uh, when he sees the woman at the beginning and that's what prompts him to oh, go yeah. looking to go looking for her. And I can only assume that, that, that the reasoning is because he realizes, okay, five is alive and five has dropped back in. And mm-hmm. I don't know if, if five told him that Diego was there as well. We don't know no. what, how much five told him, 
but he's he's got to suddenly think, well, wait a minute, maybe Allison was dropped somewhere also, and he gets Jack Ruby to find her for him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just, it, again, it's just one of those things that I, he's, he's acting this thing so well. And I love that in the fight ring there when he tells the guy to just keep punching him because he, he just wants to feel. Yeah, uh, well, that's exactly what it is. It's like he, I guess he wanted to lose in some way, but didn't want to use his powers. Well, and just to he, feel the the hurt that yeah, you know, he just, he's because he can't feel. It. I mean, that's okay. that's a that's a common psychological. I think that's I think I'm not a counselor, or psychologist. <laughs> I think that's a common psychological thing when you when you get to that place where you're so despondent that you're not feeling anything, any any feeling, you know, you're so numb that you want to feel something, and even feeling pain would do that. Yeah, yeah, is going to at least have you feeling something. So yeah, all right would lead me to my number one that would be uh the scenes of allison you know well my number one would be the scenes of allison plus the scene of <clears throat> luther losing the fight and mm-hmm. it's as if you know I, you already stated it he is punishing himself right you know so that way he could feel something not using their powers in some respect but allison's is using her rumor talk to stop the cop from killing Ray, so she was pushed to actually use her power at that point. And Ray is afraid of her at the at the end. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, you know, obviously, you stated that Luther <laughs> did not uh, want to fight back or use his power to beat the hell out of that guy <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because he just, you know, given up. Oh, you know, he's broken and he feels that he needs to feel something. And then that ending with Lila is going to the hotel with the hidden key inside the aquarium. And dum dum dum, the handler and her together. And she's her mom? <laughs> yeah, this was my number one uh, here was just this whole big reveal there at the end. And it, it leads me to question because I, I, you know, she tells Diego that story about finding her parents murdered. Uh, in her house when she was four years old from a home invasion is is that story not true or is that story true and she was then at four years old maybe the handler found her and brought her into the commission Hmm. at four years old and has raised her as her daughter you know i could kind of see that because i really believe that story that i really want or i wanted to anyway believe that story that she was opening up to diego about i didn't want to maybe it's all just a lie um i guess we'll find out you can't tell with her (laughs) you know right that's what i'm saying is is we won't find out until later uh later episodes obviously that uh uh, whether that's a lie or not yeah so do you want to start with your notes sure uh, i'll start uh Klaus's description of his cult and i think you already corrected me in the notes (laughs) it's a alternate Alternative spiritual community. Yes. As he, uh, I guess he describes it as, I put a cultural spiritual community, Mm -hmm. but you put alternative spiritual community, which is more exact. (laughs) Yeah, I I thought that was pretty cool. But the way he he states it, it's just like, and then Allison just looks at him going, it's a cult. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And he's like, enough enough about me, tell me about you. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And the sandwich gaga with the uh with the guard the gag? you mean the sandwich uh, gag gag yeah sorry i put gaga <laughs> i'm thinking lady gaga wow yeah <laughs> yeah the sandwich right. gag with the guard and the note on the typewriter by ben to help out ray out of jail you know yeah. that was fun to see plus that klaus states to to ray that they are brother-in-laws and that the the family gatherings are going to be get really weird <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I thought that was hilarious because the look on Ray's face was priceless. Right. A <laughs> um, couple of mine. Uh, that, that old guy that's out in the front of the of the gym of Diego of uh, Luther's gym. That look at the same old guy that was in the alleyway when Luther uh, appeared yelling yeah. uh, Allison's name. Uh, I loved seeing Kate Walsh in brunette hair. I thought that was great. Uh, yeah. Throwback to Grey's Anatomy or Private Practice. If Anybody watch those shows? I think her hair was more red in those shows, but uh, still not the blonde that we've been seeing. Hmm. And there's a little bit more about Harlan in this episode, mm-hmm. uh, the autistic kid that Vanya takes care of. And autism is such a hard thing to depict on screen with 
sensitivity to those that don't understand that are listening. You know, they they think they did well with the time period. I think they did well with the time period when, you know, that they are in in depicting this. But mm-hmm. you know, it, it's still something that a lot of people have a hard time showing on screen at times. But I, I'm glad that they they had something like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had uh, I thought it was funny the whole scene with Elliot uh, doing his little tuna mold, and in the background you can see. Uh, the the shadows of Diego and <laughs> Lila, Lila ha- yeah. having sex there. Yeah, um, they keep getting interrupted with the clothes hitting the window. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. waiting for that window to break. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah. But uh, we get a little bit of Lila's backstory, and uh, she tells Diego about a break in at her house. You already brought that up as a child. So yeah, I, I'm. It's like I stated. It's hard. Mm-hmm. But uh, the last one I have, it really is is just I think it's the same one you've got is Klaus wanting to reconnect with with Dave and uh, and, and trying to convince him not to join the army. But uh, I thought I think it's interesting that if this does happen, I wonder if this is going to open up like a multiverse universe kind of thing, because Klaus's character was extremely you know went through a huge change in season one yes after he met and lost dave and And he's still suffering though he's still got the ptsd we saw that when the 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 paint machine was going you Mm -hmm. know so it's still there but what happens if he does convince dave not to go into the army how does that change is that going to change his history? What's that going to do to him? It changes a lot, I think. And if he does do something like that, it, it could ruin the whole timeline. Right, right. And it's just going to depend on, like I said, whether they do the multiverse theory or the Back to the Future one line, one timeline theory to where you do a change, everything changes yeah. around you. Um, you know, hmm. so it, it's going to be interesting to see um, what happens with that. Well, it's funny too because. We already know with Endgame, and they played that in that movie with Marvel, with mm-hmm. the, the different timelines and stuff like that. If you change something, blah, blah, blah. But they just recently did that with uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. within the past two seasons, I believe. And they they said that the way they kind of explained it was you could throw a few sticks here and there, which changes and the ripples of the tides would be the, the changes that you've made within the timeline. The only time that it would make such a drastic change would be if you threw, let's say a ton of like twigs and branches and stuff all at the same time to create a huge wave, which would separate from, two different timelines itself yeah i like i said it's it's all going to depend on what what this what this what they decide to do in this in this show it's sure because every show is going to deal with it differently depending on you know like i said back to the future has one yeah marvel has one dc has another they all have different ways that they deal with these kind of things so it's just going to be interesting to see how if it happens if they have to even deal with it at all uh, how uh you know, yeah. Uh, the timeline changes. What happens if this nuclear war actually does happen on November twenty fifth? Because then that would change everything that happened after November twenty fifth, nineteen sixty three. Correct. So, you know, uh, it's it's gonna be interesting. I'm I'm sure. Uh, again, this is one of those things we just have to have faith in the writers and the story. Well, I just hope that you know we've already seen this family already screw up and create an apocalypse already and then jump back in time. Are they going to do it again? Right. This is the question. We've got this question every episode. So, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so I had a couple of quotes here or really just one, cause we've already, already talked about one. I really loved this, this line and it's kind of long, but I really, I think Kate Walsh just delivered it and I'm not going to do it justice. But when she comes into the pet shop and she sees the kid tapping on the glass and he asks her why he shouldn't tap on the glass. She says life is tough enough being so small in a world filled with predators, just wanting for some bigger waiting for some bigger fish to come along and gobble you up. And of course, then she says something else to him that we don't hear that makes him pee his pants and run out of the the store. (laughs) But that's, that's one of those lines that that's a lot of words 
and she's got some very strategic pauses in there yeah. in the way she does it that it it delivers the line uh it just it just it was beautifully delivered in my opinion uh by the actress and I, I'm so impressed by what these actors and then you've already kind of talked about it but that line from uh from Klaus was family bar- barbecues are about to get really weird <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I do agree with that. Her inflection, though, was really good. Yeah. The way she, she stated that one line. I thought that was good. Uh, first one I have would be Lila to Diego as she is using the soldering iron to burn his wounds together. <laughs> Keep still. This thing is finicky. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, really? You're burning him. And then he gets unconscious after a while. <laughs> and the last one I would have would be Allison asking Klaus how he got the house and he's like oh you know dicks drugs debutantes my holy trinity <laughs> yeah, that was that was a good line he is so flamboyant <laughs> and i do recommend everybody to, to to check out there's a bunch of interviews with the actor he's irish and he did another show before this that was pretty popular too but he, he's just – its I think it's just part of his own personality because it shows in every interview that I saw with him. <laughs> so, uh, so do we have any audio feedback? I checked. We didn't have any. We had one uh, one email uh, from Brian, uh, my nephew. Uh, thank you, Brian, so much. And this is what Brian had to say. He says he loves season one. He binge watched it in like three days, and I'm almost all the way through season two. And it has been fantastic. I also love the music in this series, love the different covers. It reminds me a lot of Guardians of the Galaxy and how they use music so well. Then he had some specific about uh, Season 2, Episode 1. Also, He said, I also get the feeling that Vanya is having a bit of Chainesia. Love the community reference there, Brian, uh, with <laughs> Chainesia. Also, she gets dropped off in October 63, and the world ends November 63. As the season goes on and we see the relationship forming with the farm family, I find it odd that she has been with them less than two months because it makes us feel like she has been there a bit longer, but then she built a, a quick, deep connection to Leonard, which I think shows her desperation for truly belonging. Keep it the good work, guys. Brian. Thank you so much, Brian. And Thank you. I, I think this this was, this came up on another podcast that I was listening to. They kind of talked about the short period of time that Vanya has bonded with this family. Mm. And I think the only thing we can really chalk it up to is just the, the, the sympathetic nature of of the way Ellen Page plays this character and even the, uh, the mom, I think it was in this episode. It was either in episode two or three. I can't remember one of them where she says something to Vanya. Like, I wish I had hit you with my car earlier, you know, um, <laughs> back so, to the future reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I think, I think for sure we're meant to just understand that, that she's just bonded quickly with yeah. this family and with this, with this child. And I think that that's, uh, I don't think that's unheard of. And I, I wouldn't necessarily, um, I, I wouldn't knock the story for it, but I, I think I, I, I see the, the problem. It does seem like it's a little quick for her to have that much, uh, closeness with the family. But at the same time, we have seen that the father is still trying to get her, you know, he's like, I put out more missing you know, missing announcements and stuff and nobody's he, answering. It's like he's trying to get rid of her. Is yeah. What he's it is. getting a little perturbed. It seems like he's getting a little perturbed to this, this house guest that is, has over, uh, over welcomes her, her stay. stay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, well, keep the feedback coming guys. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. And please don't hesitate. Send it whenever you want. We try to upload a, some sort of thread on our Facebook. So that way you could keep up. If you want to do the next two, that's fine with us. Uh, email, Facebook, or even the phone. We'll go through that at the very end. <laughs> uh, we'll continue on with our comic news. I only got one little bit because, like I said, I had no power for almost a week. <laughs> but Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has ended its series run recently, so it's finally ended. Now, mind you, I've kind of lost touch with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think I watched the first three or four seasons and I watched a little bit of the final, and it left us off with Agents of Sword. Mm. So it looks like uh, Agents of Sword will be on Disney Plus in some sort of future, which will be cool. Okay. 
Absolutely. Um, podcast recommendations. Uh, I am, uh, I, as I talked about uh, on the, the last time that Mark and I recorded, life happens. I, uh, <laughs> I am recording with Ben and Kristen tomorrow morning for a redo of the season three finale of Lost. Uh, something happened with the recording the first time, but we're going to redo it uh, tomorrow. And so that should hopefully be out uh, pretty quick after that. So check uh, your feeds. Uh, that that podcast is We Have to Go Back, Lost Revisited. It's a, a joint podcast between Podcastica and the Next Level Online Podcast Network. Awesome. Can't wait to hear that. Uh, yeah, when I heard that some of the audio, I guess, was messed up and Ben stated that. I, I was like, oh man. Yeah, something happened with Zoom. <laughs> and we just have been, we've just taken us a couple of weeks to reconnect to get it done. But I just messaged him today and he's like, oh yeah, I was going to message you. Are you available tomorrow morning? I was like, yep. Well, cool. So you might hear him twice this week. Yep. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, we'll have this podcast up probably on Monday. So, but the only two that I have, the first one would be Strange and Deeds Review of Umbrella Academy Season 2 with Rima and Paik. And that would also go with uh, podcast industries, TV, uh, TV podcast industries, and their coverage of the Umbrella Academy season two. And that would be with Derek and his friends as well. And the last one would be Tell Him Steve Dave or TESD with Walt Flanagan, Brian Johnson, and Brian Quinn on the Smodcast Network. So check them out. I've been listening to them for, geez, going on like eight or nine years. So check them out they're pretty cool and they're pretty fun to listen to for youtube recommendations uh that would be we, we always do this uh, michael and jessica are friends of mine the grim life collective with their up all night with the grims live movie watch party watch the movie the link that is on youtube and watch them live and comment as they talk about the movie and other things usually it's just casual talk but they get to the movie every once in a while but we all have a good time and it Watch parties are much like that when I do them too. And the last one would be Decker Shadow with his review of movies. Uh, he is quite entertaining when he covers the films. This is the summer of Saw, so he's covering all of the Saw movies. So if you're into gore porn, <laughs> as I call it, because it's very bloody, those movies, uh, he is currently reviewing all the soft movies in that franchise. And he's very entertaining regarding it. And you don't have to worry. There's not heavy blood or anything when he posts the uh, video when you uh, watch him. So <laughs> if you're not Alrighty. into that, but you could watch that. <laughs> All right. So to submit your feedback to us, of course, we can be heard on any of your podcast player of choice. We're out there on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts. Uh, again, uh, just search for Panels to Pixels Podcast and you'll find us. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a web page, which is Panels to Pixels Podcast dot com. Uh, our Facebook page is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can email us as uh, my nephew did at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at the end at gmail.com. And you can call us and leave a voicemail as Mark stated. If you're interested in doing that at uh, 845-350-2095. And of course we have a YouTube page which i guess we should put our own youtube page in recommendations uh panelist to pixels <laughs> podcast go there give us a thumbs up subscribe to us oftentimes the episode will drop there first before it gets to these other podcast players because it takes time to upload those uh send us feedback for any episode of season two if you've already watched ahead that's fine you're not i don't care about spoilers you're not gonna bother me uh mark's already watched ahead so because he did that he went forgive rogue forgive me please <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, it was still uh, tempting <laughs> if you do just if you do send us uh, a voicemail or some sort of email on uh, future episodes please put that in the subject line to let us know what episode to include that in uh, we may be doubling up some more episodes or we may just go one episode per week so watch our Facebook page for the announcement uh, for that week's episode definitely and where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be found right here on Panels the Pixels, as well as sending out audio feedback on occasion to other podcasts that I love that my friends do. So you'll hear me here. 
Uh, as as me uh, at the moment, there's uh, no other. Well, I just mentioned the podcast that you can hear me on. You'll hear me on the We Have to Go Back Lost Revisited podcast. You'll hear my voice on voicemails that I send to various other podcasts as well. And uh, of course, right here on Panels to Pixels. Awesome. So that was our show. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.